Krishna Bhakti Prade Devi Satya Vachai Namo Namaha Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadhar Sri Vas Adi Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare First of all I'm offering my unlimited dandavat pranams and my shraddha pushpanjali at the lotus feet of my most worshipable beloved Guru Dev, Nitya Lila Pravishta Om Vishnu Pad Paramahansa Asto Tarasata Sri Srila A.C. Bhakti Vedanta Swami Maharaj Sri Prabhupada. <clears throat> and then I'm offering my same unlimited Dandavat Pranams and my Shraddha Pushpanjali at the lotus feet of my most worshipable Beloved Siksha Guru Devs, Nitya Lila Pravishta Om Vishnu Pad Paramahans Asto Tarasata Sri Shila Bhakti Rakshak Sridhar Goswami Maharaj and Nitya Lila Pravishta Om Vishnu Pad Paramahans Asto Tarasata Sri Shila Bhakti Vedanta Narayan Goswami Maharaj and I'm offering my unlimited dandavat pranams at the lotus feet of my most worshipable Sri Sri Rupa Nuga Guru Varga. And I'm offering my dandavat pranams to all the Vaishnavas and all the Vaishnavas. <clears throat> We're on chapter four. Krishna and the Gopis. Title. And this chapter was begun only a couple of pages back. And what Gurudev is doing in the beginning of this chapter is he's now preparing the audience to hear what he says. I have explained the essence of some of the pastimes of Krishna, but now I am going to tell some very secret pastimes. So that's Gurudev's intention now. Talk about Krishna and the gopis. This is like the middle of the lecture series. And uh, he wanted to put forward that first of all, you should know who Krishna is. So is that not a fact? that if we want to hear about Krishna's secret pastimes, we should know who he is. Yes. I was just hearing a tape this afternoon as I was taking prasadam of Srila Prabhupada giving a lecture in Mauritius and the Indian community. And he was lecturing on very basic. Uh, the first verse spoken by Krishna instructing Arjuna Asochyan Anvasochas Tvam Pragya Bhadam Shabhasya where he tells to Arjuna you are speaking very learned words but you are mourning for that which is not worthy of grief those who are wise they lament neither for the living nor the dead so Srila Prabhupada was introducing that Krishna is Bhagavan like this, and that Krishna was taking the position of teacher to Arjuna because Arjuna requested. Now I'm confused about my duty. I've lost composure because of weakness. Uh, so, what? Yeah, you say? Clearly, yes. What is best for me? Now I'm your disciple, and a soul surrendered unto you. Please 
instruct me. So, but in the audience, there was one man that raised his hand, and he sounded a little bit educated, Indian accent. And he was putting forward the theory that, well, Krishna is a historical person. We have our literatures, Mahabharata and so forth. He was a king, he was like this, and he was a cowherd. But he's a historical person, and his life is like a human being. So his objection was, Aribo, his objection was that, oh, that you are saying that he is the supreme being, but we have information that he lived like a human being, a historical person in this world. So I was wondering what will Prabhupada say in response. He didn't get into a, like a heavy mood, but he just explained that in order to understand Krishna, you have to become a devotee of Krishna. You can't understand Krishna unless you become his devotee. Hmm? This is the main number one thing. And he was explaining that in course of time, as you become Krishna's devotee, Krishna will reveal himself to you. Otherwise, you'll only have an external understanding. He quoted the verse, Atakshi Krishna Namadi. Navavet Grahim Indriyai. Right? That Krishna's name, his form, his qualities, his pastimes, they are beyond the scope, beyond the range of the material senses. Grahim Indriyai. Indriyai means senses. But, and so they cannot understand the transcendental nature of Krishna, his name, his form, his qualities, anything. They cannot understand with these blunt material senses, mind and intelligence. But, what's the solution? Remember the other part of this verse? Yes. Sevon mukehi jivado. Jiva means tongue. Ado means beginning with. Sevon mukata becoming inclined to serve, then what happens? Yes, it reveals itself on your senses, on your mind, right? Swayam eva spurati, spurati means spurti, means you will have perception, you will have a perception of Krishna and so forth. But without Sevon Mukata, never, never. No one can understand. Even Krishna was there on the battlefield, but how many persons on the battlefield understood that he's the Supreme Personality of God out of millions of soldiers? They knew he's a great personality, but there were so many great personalities. Bhishma, Drona, there were Mahatratis. But Krishna's Far beyond that, he's the controller of the sun, the moon, all planetary systems, all living entities. He's in everyone's heart. None of the people on the battlefield are in that category. So Prabhupada is pointing out, he is Bhagavan. Now Gurudev, he's also saying, first of all, you should know who Krishna is. And he is not a worldly boyfriend and Srimati Radhika is not a worldly girlfriend. So from there, Srila Gurudev begins to quote verses that are describing from Bhakti Rasa Amrita Sindhu, what is rasa? He actually quotes the definition verse of rasa. Actually, this is the third time I'm speaking this, because each group, through the last class two days ago, uh, yes, yesterday I went to town. Three days ago, I read this and I talked about it. We got like two pages, two and a half pages into it. And then my last class, day before yesterday, 
I again started from the beginning because of different persons not being there. And today I'm seeing Rishab Dev Prabhu who wasn't there. So I'm, I'm inclined to repeat the subject. But nevertheless, it's a very wonderful subject to repeat. It's, it's not a chore to do that because all different uh, thoughts come. You know, different, different angles come as we discuss. And it depends on who's hearing, you see. So, but I'm anxious to continue forward. So I'm going to make this really short. So he quotes the verse from Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu. Vyatitya bhavana vartama. This is the verse that actually describes what rasa is. Vyatitya bhavana vartama yashchamatkara bharabhu. Pridi satvojvale badham svadate sa raso mataha. Rasa is, this is the definition, Rupa Goswami. This is a really jewel of a verse. Rasa is the miraculous staibhav, the permanent emotion, which is the veritable repository of wonder. Chamatkara, wonder. And which is experienced after the practitioner crosses beyond the path of contemplation. It is relished in the heart that has become radiant from being thoroughly and completely refined by pure, unalloyed, transcendental existence, Shuddha Sattva. This is Ras. So Gurudev is pointing this out in the beginning. He wants that everybody will understand that Radha and Krishna's love uh, is most elevated. Is most elevated. And it is not material lust. Because all relationships between male and female in the human society, they're based upon lust. But Radha and Krishna's love is not of that. It may resemble it from a certain angle of a, of a conditioned soul looking at it, but it's absolutely the opposite. Well, what does uh, Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami express about that? He says that mundane lust is like a lump of iron. It, it's a metallic substance, right? But love, transcendental love, it is like gold. So we know the qualitative difference and value and everything about it, the beauty of it, everything, is completely different. But Krishna Das Kavaraj Goswami is pointing this out. Just like the difference between gold and iron, love and lust are completely different. So unless someone makes some, some advancement, their faith becomes strong, they cannot understand this. That is why the warnings are always given. Because if someone is contemplating these intimate pastimes of Radha and Krishna, and they are thinking in terms of material lust, then it will have the opposite effect. Opposite. Uh, it will not advance them. It will become degraded. Because they're committing aparad, and they're trying to drag down the transcendental reality to the mundane plane. So that is why the acharyas are always very careful about this. And Gurudev was also very careful. Otherwise he would not be saying what he's saying here prior to entering into the topic. So, so, And he says that no mental speculation can touch them, Radha and Krishna and their love. Cannot even touch. That is why Krishna is called Adhoksha Jatattva or Aprakrita Tattva. So these two terms I lectured on them in the last classes. Adhoksha means what? 
beyond the senses of the living being, beyond yes. his conception of them. Yes. He is above. He is way, way, way above everything and everyone. So, Adha Kshaja, Srila Sridhar Maharaj explained, Adha means downward. And Kshaja means causing others to go downward. Meaning, from his position, he's on the top. He's on the top level. Uh, so no one can approach uh, unless they gain admittance through him. So, yes, Adhokshaja means beyond the range of our material senses and so forth. And a Prakrita Tattva. No, Prakrita means like material. They use the mic down on the floor. Prakita means <clears throat> material, like the mundane plane. Abhita means transcendental. Yes. Can you give an example? Of Prakita and uh, Abhita. Oh, okay. uh, there is a Vrindavan on this earth, which is visible to anyone who goes. That is Prakrit Vrindavan. And then there's Goloka. That's called Prakat, not Prakrit. Prakrita. Prakrit. Prakat. Prakat. Prakat means manifest. Prakat. Yes. And aprakat means unmanifested. Yes. But prakrita and aprakrita is different. You're correct when you say about how it is referring to the material plane. But can you give an example? Well, well that, that there is some Vrindavan that's visible to people mm -hmm. going there, but there's also a transcendental Vrindavan, mm -hmm. which is beyond the range of just material senses, that mm -hmm. is spiritual. Right. Um, Srila Bhaktisiddhanta Saraswati Thakur explains that there are three levels of existence. One level is called Prakrita, material, maya potency, everything. Prakrita. And the next level is called Adhokshaja, the Adhokshaja realm. And that is compared to Vaikuntha. Uh, where Adhokshaja Bhagavan is there, and it is completely above and beyond anything in the material world. But then there is Aprakrita. The Jigaloka Vrindavan, Krishna's Braj Lila pastimes, are referred to as Aprakrita because they resemble Prakrita. But they're Aprakrita, Bhaktisiddhanta Saraswati Thakur explained like that. They resemble the ordinary village life and all of that, Krishna's pastimes. But they are far, far beyond. And that's why you have to hear Krishna's pastimes with strong faith, which is the next point that Gurudev is going to make. Uh, because by his pastimes, everything is revealed about him and about his dham and his associates. Uh, for example, Lord Brahma had a, made a big, big... Uh, miscalculation and mistake, thinking that he can test this little coward boy. Is he really Bhagavan or not? <laughs> but then, in the end of that pastime, he was inundated with the visions of unlimited numbers of Vishnu forms coming from the coward boys, that every single little detail Krishna himself had become the calves and the cowherd boys. And Krishna revealed to him, there's a good painting of that revelation. I think it was done by Murlidhar, looks like his style, where Krishna is sitting, and then you see all these Vishnu forms coming out. So Lord Brahma, who has the biggest brain of any soul in the universe, he was completely astonished. He could not comprehend Krishna's power. And then he started to offer all those prayers, Brahma Stuti, and admitting that if anybody says they understand you, oh my Lord, uh, I can tell them that I don't understand you one bit. Even if anyone could count all the unlimited grains of sand on every single beach in the, on this planet and in every planet of the universe, they could still not approach 
uh, estimating your glories. You're so unlimited. So Gurudev is saying that uh, Krishna is called Adhoksaja Tattva and Aprakrita Tattva. Now if we have even a seed of transcendental Shraddha, faith, you know, this point he's now making, and if we also have honor to hear, so he's giving us what is the standard for you to hear these pastimes, which he's now going to be telling. So even if we have even a, a seed of transcendental Shraddha, faith, and we have honor to hear, then we can gradually understand all these truths, all these tattvas. He says, all kinds of lust, it will go away. And gradually, shuddha sattva, pure transcendence, that will come. Shuddha sattva. All lust will go away, and pure shuddha sattva, transcendence will come. What a day that would be. Huh? But he's saying here, even if you just have a seed, and you have some honor to hear, then gradually, gradually, by hearing, then that day will come. Huh? Can you use the mic? mic? There's a different edition. Yeah, that's the first edition. This is. Do you have a footnote which defines Shuddha Sattva? Uh, it says no, here, not here. Shuddha Sattva is the transcendental platform mm -hmm. of pure goodness yes. on which Bhav Bhakti is manifest. Okay, yes. No, he says, we are not qualified to speak on them or to hear them. He's admitting, telling us. Of course, he is qualified, but he's including himself in the category, we. But still, he's making a very important point that senior devotees, for the senior devotees, I am telling something. He's telling very specifically there's a category of listeners that I am speaking to. He says, those who are senior, they must hear. And they should hear with very strong faith and honor. These two things he keeps on saying, strong faith and honor. And they should know this. And then they should follow the process from the beginning. But they should carefully hear. So now Gurudev makes point for point. It's actually an astonishing next few paragraphs, but I'm not going to go through it. I'm just going to touch it. First he quotes the verse, Ishwara Parama Krishna. So he says, first, Krishna is Bhagavan. And this verse, Ishwara Parama Krishna, Satchidana in the What then? Anadya. Anadya, Adya. Govinda, Sarva Karana Karana. First shloka of Brahma Samhita. Okay? So, he quotes that verse, and then he says, not only that, Krishna is not just Bhagavan, he is Swayam Bhagavan. And he quotes the verse, third chapter, first canto, Ete Chamsikala Pungsa, Krishna is to Bhagavan Swayam, Indrari Vyakulam Loke Mridayanti Yuge Yuge. So, what does Swayam Bhagavan mean? The original Swayam. Yeah. In that verse, what is it saying about Krishna in that verse from the third chapter of the first canto? He's the source of the, 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 the origin of all other incarnations. Well, it doesn't actually specifically say that in the Sanskrit. But Swayam Bhagavan means that. But what especially does it mean? In the context of that chapter, which is all mentioning the various incarnations. So Sutta Goswami is summarizing at the end of that chapter by this verse, 
And he's saying, all of these that have just been mentioned now, they are all amshas and kalas. What does that mean? Amsha means a part. And kala means a part of a part, plenary portion. Right? But Krishna stu Bhagavan Swayam. Krishna is not one of them. He is Bhagavan Swayam. Very important verse. What That's the mind. One himself, his very self, Swayam, his very self. Jai Jai. Just like we had a god brother who has left his body named Swayam. Swayam what? Jata. What's the meaning? Self born. Self born. Swayam Jata. Who's that? Brahma. Lord Brahma. Self born. Okay, so Gurudev quotes that. So Krishna is Bhagavan himself. Rajendranandan. The ocean of Rasa. So what Gurudev is doing is he's going over the dust mul tattva here. First principle. Amnaya uh, praha tattvam harir iha paramam. First principle is harir iha paramam tattva. That who is the supreme truth? Paramam tattva is hari. The whole world doesn't know that, but we do. We know who God is. We know who the origin and the original. Uh, original personality, the tattva, the supreme param tattva, above all other tattvas, we know who it is. Krishna is that person. And sarva shaktim, rasabdim, the next two of the dasmul tattva, sarva shaktim, he is the controller and the source and the possessor of all shaktis of all energies. And third point, rasabdim. What does that mean? Rasabdi. Yes, he is an ocean. The word abdi means ocean. Rasa abdi, rasabdim, rasabdim. He is the ocean of rasa. So those three are pertaining to Bhagavan. So Gurudev is saying that he is Brajendra Nandan, Bhagava, Krishna's Bhagavan himself, Brajendra Nandan, the ocean of rasa. He is Sarva Shakti Man. All kinds of powers seemingly contradictory to each other, they are within him. All powers are within him, even if they're contradictory to each other, uh, seemingly. Hmm? Yes. And he is Shakti Shakti Matayor Abeda. That means there is no difference between Krishna and his Shakti, his powers. That's from Vedanta Sutra, that statement. Shakti, Shakti, Matayor, Abeda. Abeda means no difference. Uh, he is Sarva Karana Karanam. He is the cause of all causes. Uh, Shakti Man, the embodiment of infinite powers. And Akil Rasamrita Sindhu. He is the complete ocean of the nectar of loving relationships. So then Gurudev is saying, we hear this, but we have no realization of it. We can only hear. So if after practicing for many thousands of births, we realize what we have heard, then we are very, very fortunate. So we should assume that we've been practicing for many, many births. Uh, because to get this far and have Sadhguru and have spent your life hearing and 
trying to practice, that means there's already so much previous life. Otherwise, could not get that high association. So, we are very close. But Gurudev is making the point that we can only hear. And if after practicing for many thousands of births, we realize what we have heard, then we are very, very fortunate. You had some points? So then Gurudev asks, who are the gopis? Who are they? Oh, they are Vilas Murti. Vilas Murti means pastime expansions of who? Krishna. Krishna himself. Krishna is one without a second. He is the Paramatakva. Everything comes from him. One without a second. And he is Advaigyan Paratattva. Advaigyan Paratattva means the complete Tattva, Paratattva, the supreme truth, complete. And all the Vishva Brahmandas, the material worlds, and all the Chit Jagat, the transcendental worlds, and all of the Jeet Jagat, living entities, they have come from his power, from his Shakti. So, gopis, they are his Vilasamurtis. They've come from him. They're actually him. So he says, there's no difference between them, but still, Bade Abade. There is difference, and there is non difference. Is that being extended to the point where it says that Krishna is Atmaram and Atmakam? The gopis mm -hmm. are manifestations of his own energy. Yes. And in that, that yes, it's by his desire. Aptakam uh, means that even if he has any desire, he can fulfill it himself. And Atmaram means he's completely fulfilled already in his very own self, his Atma. Right, right. But you know, Gurudev does get into that, this point that you're raising about um, Ananda Chidmaya Rasa Pratibhavita. This verse from the Brahma Samhita, which is quoted in the fourth chapter of Adi Lila which is all about Radha Tattva and Mahaprabhu's purposes of descending. So, Ananda Chinmaya Rasa Pratibhavita Vistavirya Eva Nija Rupa Taya Kalabi. This is talking about the gopis. Uh, and it's describing, in that verse, Brahma is describing that Nija Rupa Taya Kalabi these very personalities are expansions of his own very self. So we have to understand it through the angle of a chintya beta beta tattva. Simultaneously, one with and different from. Now he says, we can only we cannot understand this with our mind. But we can only understand it through our Guru Parampara. That's the only way. Amnaya Praha. Now Gurudev is quoting the first words of that verse. Amnaya Praha means you should know what Amnaya means. So Amnaya is the authentic evidence of the Vedas of the Upanishads and all other scriptures which have been accepted by our Guru Parampara. If something is called Veda but it is not accepted by our Parampara, then we will reject it. So this is the criterion. Not all the Vedas are in the category of Amnaya because Amnaya is what Guru Parampara has accepted. Uh -huh. So that is, it is not that the full, because Amnaya is also referring to the evidence that proves the Pramaya. Pramaya means that which is proved, and Praman means 
the evidence that proves it. So Amnaya is the Praman. But which Praman? Not all. Not all different Vedic literatures. Uh, there are some Vedic literatures that are promoting the heavenly planets, going there, drinking Somaras, etc. So they're for different persons and different modes of nature. So Amnaya is what the Acharyas have accepted as the perfect evidence. Our Guru Parampara has accepted that Srimad Bhagavatam, it is the Amala Praman. Amala. You know the meaning of Amala? Spotless. Amala Paran, immaculate evidence. <clears throat> Srimad Bhagavatam and all the Shastras are saying that all gopis, they are none different from Krishna. Huh? And Brahma Samhita states, Ananda Chinmaya Rasa, the verse that I quoted, Ananda Chinmaya Rasa, Pratibhavi Tabis, Tabiriya Eva Nijam Rupataya Kalabi. What is this telling, Brahma Samhita? That these gopis, they are the Rupa, they are the form of Krishna. They're not different than Krishna. They are Krishna himself. And Srimati Radhika herself is Krishna. There is no difference at all between them. And only for vilas, for pastimes, for relishing each other, only for this has Krishna divided himself into two. And Krishna was in Vrindavan, and he was alone. This is talking about an incident. Where Krishna was in Vrindavan, he was alone, and he was at Vamshivat, on the bank of the Yamuna, where there is a banyan tree. And from his left side, his very beautiful Parashakti, his Ladini Shakti, in the form of Srimati Radhika, came out. And then what did she do? when she came out from him. Yes. Uh, so Gurdjieff is explaining about this point, how she ran towards him, and that's indicative in her name. We'll read it. So, in the form of Srimati Radhika, she came out from his left side, and, he, and she ran towards him with what? Raga, attachment. Now, the word ra, it means what? Anurag. Ra, in the name Radha or Radhika. Ra means Anurag. That means intense transcendental affection. Anurag. And dha, dha, Dha means davati. Davati means to eagerly run very fast. Eagerly run very fast. Davati. So radha means to eagerly run with high class ecstatic love and emotion. She ran towards Krishna calling Krishna, Krishna. And in this way, she became Radha. Because she was worshipped by Krishna himself, oh, her name is also Radhika. Why is her name Radhika? Because she was worshipped by Krishna himself. So, Radhika. And then that name Radhika, he's saying she was worshipped by Krishna himself, but really, he says here, she herself is Krishna. She herself is Krishna. This is a whole new 
you know, clear understanding. Every devotee has to hear this, try to understand this, and try to worship this principle of how Radha and Krishna, they are one. Gurudev emphasized this many times. Our Prabhupada also, he used to quote one line from this verse, Radha Krishna Pranaya Vikritir Allah Dini Shaktir Asmad. And then at the end of the verse, this is written by Surup Damodar Goswami. It's one of the introductory verses of Chaitanya Charitamrita. And describing how Radha and Krishna Pranaya Vikritir Allah Dini Shaktir Asmad. That means that the two persons, Radha, Krishna, their pranai, their love, is what? It is a transformation, vikriti, of what? Allah Dini Shakti. That love of Radha and Krishna is a vikriti, a trans, uh, transformation of Vladini Shakti. Mm. In this book it says, uh, you cannot imagine this. Mike? Gurudev has said this on numerous occasions. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. You, you cannot imagine this, but it is stated in Shastra, so you should accept it. Correct. So, this is the point. Her name is also Radhika, but she herself is Krishna. She is Krishna. And you cannot imagine this, but it is stated in Shastra, so you should accept it. So this is the point. It is not that we are going to completely understand and realize, but if Shastra states that Krishna actually is not different than Radha. We cannot understand that fully, but we should, with great strong faith and great honor, we should accept that. Because it's the, it's the two truth, it's the tattva, it's the siddhanta. So we have to accept that, but then one day, we will also realize it. So, what is their love? What is Radha and Krishna's love? Bhav. Bhav is their love. Bhav is not anything of this world. It is Shuddha Sattva. It is the essence of Vladini, the transcendental pleasure potency, and it is Samvit, the cognitive po cognizant potency mixed together. Vladini and Samvit are being mixed together on the platform of Sandini, the existence potency. Many times Gurudev has explained this. So without Sandini, there is no Vladini and no Samvit. Vladini and Samvit, they meet on the platform of Sandini. So we know that Baladev Prabhu is the predominating deity of Sandini. Krishna is of Samvit and Vladini Shakti, Srimati Radhika. Radharani herself is Krishna's Ladini potency. Why Ladini? Because she always gives Hlada, means pleasure to Krishna. That's where the name Prahlad, Hlad means pleasure. She always gives pleasure to Krishna. Her body is made of the most elevated Mahabhav, the very essence of Ladini, the transcendental pleasure potency. All of her organs, all of her moods, her senses, her hair, her eyes, and everything about her, they're made of Mahabhav. But therefore she is Ladini. So, See how nice. <laughs> Tomorrow we'll read about the stages of praying. Stages of praying. That's mm -hmm. the next section. Yeah.
was another occasion where Gregory said, you can't understand why the body's on the one rock. You can't understand what? Well, the body's on the one rock, and they were discussing about whether the Jesus sees Krishna when he turns or he doesn't see. And finally, Gurudev just said, you know, when you come out of the Vishnu. Oh. And finally, Gurudev said, for now, just accept the words of Bhakti Vedanta Kuru. Then you will understand to read Bhakti. Yes. So there's so many things in Krishna consciousness which are like that. That's yeah. why we have Guru and Shastra. Actually, Achintya Kalo Ye Bhava Natam Starkena Yojayat. This verse is saying, Achintya Kalo Ye Bhava. The nature of everything that uh, that is transcendental is achintya. Everything is achintya. It's all inconceivable. Na tam starkena yojayet. It cannot be understood by logic, by argument and debate. Uh, not possible. Tarka means tarka be tarka. You know, debating logical points. So everything is transcendental. Everything is a chintya. So we have to enter into that realm of bhakti, because only by bhakti, then the true transcendental nature of everything becomes revealed gradually. Okay? It is time now for our Gaur Artik, and Radha Krishna Jugal Artik, Sandhya Artik. Rantra Shimad Bhagavatam Ki Jai, Shila Gurudev Ki Jai, Shri Prabhupada Ki Jai, Shri Rupanuga Guru Varga Ki Jai, Satinandana Gaurahari Ki Jai, Nitai Gaur Pramana Gaur, Hari Hari Gaur.